So let's talk about background checks. So at this point in your process to getting a residency in Ecuador, you should have already filed all of your paperwork for your degree. This should already be registered with Oregon. I'm sorry, I'm from Oregon. Should already be registered with Ecuador and the next step is getting your background checks. Is there a problem officers? So what background checks do you need to come to Oregon? Well, so I think I mentioned earlier, you actually need two, not one, but two background checks. Why? Well, welcome to the United States. We have a split system which uh, has both state and federal law enforcement. So you need to be background checked by the state you've been living in. And if you've been living in several states over the years, you probably have to be background checked in all of them. Uh, certainly in the most current one that you're in, if you've been in that one for at least 10 years, it, that's fine. But um, if you have only been living there a short time, you probably have to get background checks in other states just to make sure that you've got a clean background check. I think the number is 10 years, double check me on that. So the state background check obviously varies state for state. So I'll describe the procedure in Oregon, which is relatively painless. You basically get yourself fingerprinted. You can go to a private company or you can go down to your local sheriff's office. Local sheriff is cheap, but they're very friendly normally. So you run down there, get yourself fingerprinted. You take the fingerprint card and you mail it off to the state police. The state police then does the criminal background check, making sure that the person whose fingerprints were just submitted is the person who is being background checked and the, the person who's receiving the background check. That all has to match up. You get your background check from the state of Oregon and you have to specifically ask them to notarize it. Now your state might be a little different and I'm not going to go through all 50 states. The easiest way is to go to your state's website, Google, look for how do you get a background check in the state you're in? And it's pretty simple usually. The key is, before you do that, you also need to go to the Secretary of State website uh, for the state that you're being background checked in and see what their requirements are for an apostille document. Because after you get your background check done, you have to have an apostille at the Secretary of State. Now, for example, Oregon requires that the background check be notarized. And so when you go to the state police to get your background check, there's a little checkbox on the application to make to have it be notarized. And of course, there's a fee to be paid to have it notarized. That's perfectly normal. You'll have to pay a little extra fee. Most of the fees are really reasonable. Uh, just a few bucks here and there. I mean, you'll be nickeled and dimed to death on this process, but it's not too bad. So you get your background check back from the state police. And again, most states, I think it is the state police that does a background check. You get your document back, then you send it off to the Secretary of State to be apostilled. Now you have your background check for the state. Now, that background check is only good for six months from the time the background check was issued. It doesn't matter if it took two, four, six weeks or two months to get apostilled at the Secretary of State. The clock starts ticking when the background check is issued. This is why you want to do this sort of late in the process, just before you go down to Ecuador, uh, because you need to bring this with you, and it needs to be within six months. And it's going to take two to four weeks to get a postile, darling. So you already only have five months left in it by the time you get all the paperwork done. Then on top of this, concurrently while you're getting your state background check, you need to go attack that federal background check. This is where you might grow old and die waiting for it to come back. So there are companies that do this. I'm going to include, um, in the description of this, I'm going to include a blog post I did, which has the links to the uh, links to the companies that I used at the federal level. This will work from no matter where you live in the country. These are federal background checks, and there is a company that did mine. They're probably overpriced. You know, you pay like I think it was like a hundred bucks or so to do the uh, background check. And then you have to pay another hundred bucks or so to have a pasta deal. It uh, really is quite the racket, but it's quick, painless, and easy. And so the process for this particular company is uh, you get fingerprinted again. If you think you can use the same fingerprints you did from the state, of course you can't. Everybody's got to get, got to get their cut of money. So you go find a fingerprint place. They have a whole list of fingerprint places that you can go to all around the country. And in, 
all around the neighborhood. So you go get yourself fingerprinted. You get the fingerprinted at their their location. It's electronic fingerprinted. Those fingerprints are sent off to the background check company, and that goes super fast. I had my background check back to me before I got home from being fingerprinted within the hour. Uh, and that's step one. Then the next step is to get an apostille. You can take it to the uh, secretary. Uh, actually, for federal level, you've got to go to the State Department in Washington, D.C. Fly out to Washington, D.C., drop the stuff off up there, super easy. Or maybe you take a little easier route. The background check place that I worked with has an apostille place that they work with. What a shock. They'll even take the electronic copy of your background check. So you can have your background check back within an hour at the federal level, sit off the electronic copy to the company that's going to push it through the Secretary of State. All this could happen within the course of an hour or two. But that is where time slows down. Now you have to wait for the State Department to do their work. In my case, that took four weeks just to get the apostille work done. In the case of my wife, it was six weeks. The, the federal so the federal background check was done six weeks. By the time we got the apostle documents, it was already a month and a half into the uh, six month window. So this is a lengthy process. Once you have both of those, then you've got to do the back. Then you've got to do the application process and get your visa because those are going to expire. So again, go to your state's website, both the Secretary of State to figure out apostille requirements and your state police website or Google for what, probably the state police, to figure out how to get your background check in the state you're at. In Oregon, it's super easy. Um, then you've got to go to, at the federal level, and get that done. That goes fast up until the point you hit this, the um, Secretary of State, or sorry, the uh, State Department, and then it moves at a snail's pace. I'm going to include the blog that I did that have the links for the people that I use for this. I'm not endorsing them in any other way or form other than to say they produced results for me. So um, I hope you find this stuff interesting. Um, I'm actually now working on the final leg of that, which is I've been working with a lawyer down here in Ecuador to get my visa. Hopefully my next video will be the summation of all the final steps I had to go to to get the visa now that I'm down here. The registered degree and getting the background check is what you do before you come to Ecuador. And no matter what type of visa you're getting, a professional visa requires a degree, but no matter what visa you're getting, you've got to do the background check. Never get down to that down here in Ecuador. Now, one thing I could think people would want to know is what sort of issues could pop up on the background check to make you not be eligible. And I really tried to find a list of that, and I couldn't. Um, I did find that uh, there is a review process. If you don't like the review process, you can appeal that process here in Ecuador. Um, hopefully people have a fairly clean background check. A um, couple minor issues, you know, shoplifting as a kid, stuff like that, that's probably not going to be an issue. Uh, DUIs, we can touch you about that in a lot of countries, so that could be a problem. Certainly any violent offense is going to be a problem. Drug offenses are really touchy down here, uh, given the past in um, Latin America, so that could be a problem. So the best thing is to try, see what happens, and you can appeal it if you don't like the results. So good luck with your background check, and I hope to be back with another video specifically on the final steps of visa work for my professional visa down here in Ecuador.